2003 marked the debut of Capcom's heroic, lovable, blue robot boy Mega Man on the PlayStation 2 in Mega Man X7. The title was a, sort of a mishmash of 2D and 3D platforming action. It wasn't really much like the old school Mega Man games that were beloved by the masses. And it just kind of fell flat overall. Capcom has tried to remedy this fact with Mega Man X8, the year after follow-up. And it does actually kind of return to the sort of old school style of gameplay where you're just kind of running around, shooting evil robots and what have you. However, nostalgic gameplay isn't really enough to salvage the whole experience. X8 is still an intensely frustrating game that just isn't a whole lot of fun, and most Mega Man fans will probably just be pretty disappointed with what it does with the series. The whole point of the game is that you're going through stages, shooting up robots, solving occasional puzzles, and then shooting up boss robots and taking their weapons. That's what it's all about. The basic gameplay in X8 is pretty familiar, it's kind of old hat. X8 is pretty much a 2D side-scroller from beginning to end. The additional characters that showed up in last year's game, Zero and Axel, are back once again. You can still play as them. Uh, at the beginning of each stage, you pick two of them, and then you can kind of tag team each one out as you play. Axel, for instance, can kind of hover in midair. Zero is just close quarters combat guy. He's got a sword. He can kind of just get up and close and personal with dudes and cut them. And Mega Man's still just Mega Man. Well, the addition of the extra characters is nice and everything. What it basically boils down to is that the game just isn't a whole lot of fun to play, and that's big in part because of the level designs. The whole thing requires a whole lot of memorization on your part. You kind of have to go through and just die a whole lot of times, figuring out where all the one-kill spike pits are. No! This wouldn't be so bad, except for the fact that all difficulty levels in the game, apart from the easiest, have a basically a limited continue system. So you only get so many retried chips, as the game calls it. And while there are checkpoints while you're playing, if you lose all those retry chips, you got to start the whole level over again, and that's just painful. The combat in the game also isn't really all that great. Despite the fact that you know, all three playable characters are sort of have their own new weapons that they can earn as they go uh, and have their different abilities, it's just that there isn't a whole lot to it. You know, Even though they have these different weapons, you don't really use them a whole lot. For the most part, their standard blasters are just enough to get the job done, and the extra weapons, you know, while some of them do more damage than others, just don't feel all that necessary. There are a couple of little things in the combat that are a little bit different, like there's a special combo attack that you can uh, use with both characters by filling up a meter as you play. When you time this right and you press the R2 button to do this attack, it sort of goes in this crazy cutscene where you're like all of a sudden on this plane that looks like it's inside the Matrix and then you're both shooting the guy and then the robot takes some damage or something. Neat idea, but it isn't really all that effective of an attack most times, say for a couple of specific enemies, and it, I don't know, it just doesn't look all that great, honestly. Perhaps the worst thing about Mega Man X8, though, is the boss battles. The bosses in this game are absolutely ridiculous, even for a Mega Man game. There's the Bird Rooster and the Optic Sunflower. What? What, what, what is it? The Bird Rooster would have been made fun of had it come out in 1989. So in this day and age, it's just even more insipidly stupid. Even worse, though, is that the combat during the boss battles just also isn't very good. The patterns are still super rudimentary to figure out, and the only challenge is the fact that the, the bosses do deal a fair amount of damage. While it's great in everything that it's the same style of boss battle as in the old games, that style is also kind of starting to show its age. Mega Man X8 is for sure a more playable game than X7 was, but it also is, still isn't a whole lot of fun. The inherent problem is that the Mega Man series, despite you know, the fact that it's made the transition to the next generation platforms, hasn't really evolved. There's all these other little side genres that they kind of venture off into with like the Command Mission series and things like that. But as far as the actual, just straight up Mega Man game goes, it just doesn't hold up as well in this point in time. If you want old school Mega Man gaming, go get Mega Man Anniversary Collection. It's a better game, has all the old school games you love, and none of the banality and just annoyances that X8 provides.